in a second. Good afternoon. It's mid-February in 2017, and we are here with Betty Dierks. Um, it's a very interesting interview today because Betty happens to be my mother, so um, hopefully I won't run out of questions to ask, and um, we can have a really interesting. So welcome, Betty. Thank you for agreeing to be interviewed for our project. Okay. Um, I will start out by with some background information that I don't even have to ask the questions because I know. Uh, Mom was born in 1927, January 27, 1927, in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Mom was born to Jack and Marguerite Curran of Irish and German descent, or so we thought. Good little Irish Catholic girl. Um, and started going to school at a parochial school in Chicago. This makes it a different uh, interview than any of the ones we've done so far because most all of our subjects were born and raised out here in the Moni area and um, came a lot from farm stock but from a small town background. Mom was brought up in the city. She only came to Moni relatively recently when she married my dad and that was in 1948. So in Moni terms that's relatively recently but obviously in real terms that's a few years ago. So um, I think I'd like to just start by uh, saying I, the earliest memories that I remember you telling me about is when you started school. Do you have any memories from earlier than school? Not really. I can remember walking into a, a through a doorway and seeing a Christmas tree and thinking, oh, isn't that beautiful? But I don't know. I might have been about two years old at the time. Yeah. So it's not really a memory so much as... But I do have a correction for you. My first school was in Detroit, Michigan. Aha, see? Mm -hmm. yeah. Shocking things revealed already. I had, a, I had, uh, I went to kindergarten in Detroit, then we moved to Chicago, and from then on I was in Chicago. What part of Chicago? Um, it's kind of, I don't know exactly what they call it, it if you know where no, um, Holy Name Cathedral is, mm. it was a couple of blocks away from there. Oh. So up around the Lincoln Park area at the time, I think it was a lot different. No, it was, than... more, it was farther south than that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it would be. Um, and the reason you were in Detroit, because I know your parents met in Chicago. They met in Chicago. They married in Chicago. But they went to Detroit because my dad was working for Ford Motor Company. And that didn't last very long, and uh, then they came back here. And since you were born in 1927, uh, that was right on the cusp of the Great Depression. Yeah. So was that a factor as well? Oh, I'm sure it must have been. And I know that when you came back, was your dad employed when you came back to Chicago? Now that I don't know. I was too young to really pay attention to that. I know that he was employed at sometimes, but he was also, they were also on relief for a while because I don't, he didn't always have a job. Mm -hmm. So some of the but which which would win? I'm. I was just too young to know yeah, the difference. Yeah. Now, one thing I know that we have evidence of some of the things that your father did during the depression is we have some quilts. So tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. Well, yeah, he um, made around the world quilts with materials that he had. I don't know how he acquired them, but he cut them into little pieces and sewed them together. They never got quilted until much later. But, um, yeah, he did, he did that. Do you remember other things to do with the Depression? Oh, golly. I remember taking my little, our little wagon and going down the street and getting some food put into the little wagon and dragging it home. Um, not a whole lot because I never felt like we were poor. Mm -hmm. And um, even though we had, we lived in a one-room apartment for a while. Mm -hmm. um, it just, that was normal life to me. It didn't, mm -hmm. never occurred to me that I was poor because everybody else was poor. Tell me a little bit about the back, your mom and dad's background and how they met. Well, um, my mother's mother was really running a boarding house on Erie Street, Chicago. My dad must have lived there, and I think that's how they met. And how about your dad's background? 
I think this is pretty interesting. Well, he was born uh, in Minnesota. At least this is the way I was told. He was born in Minnesota. He uh, lost his parents at an early age, and he, um, I don't know what he was doing in between, but when he was very young, he started off on his own. He took off and was employed this, that, and the other thing. So yeah, he was about 13, I think, the story I heard. He was 13, 13 when he ran away from the orphanage because yeah. mm -hmm. his mom had passed away. There were seven or eight kids. The dad couldn't take care of him and abandoned the family. And yeah. all of the kids were dispersed here and there and everywhere to go with, live with relatives and different things. And Grandpa was hurt in an accident. Do you remember that part? The fire when he got burnt? Oh, yeah. I don't know just what the fire was all about, but I do know he was burned in a fire and he wound up in in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, how old was he when that? He, I don't think he was in school yet. Oh, young. I'm pretty Six, sure seven, eight, something like something that. Something like mm -hmm. that. He, he, yeah. Oh, I, probably even younger. Yeah, he was what the way he used to tell the story is he was. They were goofing around, kids, and he jumped. They were jumping over a kerosene heater. And they knocked it over, and he caught on fire and, and wound up in the hospital. Now, that's interesting. He must have told you that, mm -hmm. because I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, that was the story. And mm -hmm. then, then when he was in the hospital, um, he, um, after he got back out of the hospital, when he was healed, the family was just gone. The yeah. other kids were dispersed. He had oh. nowhere, so they put him in an orphanage, because oh. he didn't have any family. And then at 13, he told them pretty... That's he ran away from the Right, because he he, they would foster him out. And he That's told, right. They yeah. fostered him out to, to work oh, to, uh, right. at different places. Right. And as he worked, um, he'd get a certain amount of pay for that, I guess. I don't know. I think that. he got his room and board, and they got free probably. help. Mm -hmm. That's probably about what it was. And the time he got chased by the farmer's wife with the butcher knife is the time he ran away from the orphanage. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so this yeah. was uh, so he was out on. They were putting him out on farms. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Up in the Minnesota area, I was still. Was yeah, I'm not sure. Minnesota. Up around yeah. Brainerd yeah. is what he's up. Brainerd, uh, Minnesota. There, yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. putting him out on farms, right, for his room and board. And, but mm -hmm. Chase with a butcher knife, huh? Chase with a butcher yeah. knife. Mm -hmm. did, he, yep. did he come right to Chicago after that, do you know? No, I don't know. I don't think so. I, I know think he, he was... bummed around the country. He bummed the rails for a while, didn't yeah. he? Mm -hmm. He rode the rails. Yeah. yeah. Because it seems to me I remember him saying something about he very narrowly missed getting run over by a train because he turned and got off, off just in time. He was sitting on the rails. He was sitting on the Or rails. sitting on a bridge so next to the rails and fell asleep. Is that uh -huh. what it was? Yeah. yeah. And the train came by and the motion of the train spun him around in a circle. <gasps> and he missed getting killed. Because what year would that have been? Wow. Well, it's been a long time ago. Well, Mom was born in 27. So, and Dad, and Grandpa was born... When? Right at the turn of the century. Uh, he was born before the turn of the century, but I don't know how many like years. 1897, like 1897, 98, something some, like that. So could have been even a little earlier. Could have yeah, been so he was probably in his teens. Mm -hmm. So it would have been, you know. Yeah, he was pretty young. Yeah, before 1920, probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, he, we also have a picture of him in the service. Yeah. So he joined up. At World War One, uh -huh. and he joined up just before it was over because he was never in service okay. in in uh, combat at all. Mm -hmm. gotcha. But he had they had a nickname him and his buddies in the service too. Do you remember that? No. They were called the Hennessy Boys. Oh, I forgot all about that. <laughs> I mean, they were called the Hennessy Boys because they were all five star Hennessy, the the drink, the liquor. Did, yeah, what is that? Uh, Whiskey, yeah, but yeah. Hennessy. Hennessy. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. So they were the Hennessy yeah, Boys. I totally forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. And his name was Jack Curran, and he was Catholic and Irish. Right. Mm -hmm. And we talked about it a lot, and uh, we said, well, did you ever go back to, the, to Brainerd to try to find the rest of your family? Mm -hmm. And what did he tell us about that? I think he told us that they were all gone, didn't he? They were gone, and the orphanage that he was in had burnt down, and there were no records. Right. Right, I'd forgotten about that. You see, wow. my dad talked to the kids quite a bit too, so some of the stories I never even heard. Sure. Christy mm -hmm. heard them. So, how did he ever prove he was who he said he was? <laughs> well, there's another interesting story. So, 
This is what he told me because back in the early 70s, I started trying to research the family and do mm -hmm. genealogy. And this is what he told me. And he said he had twin sisters, right? They were named L Lily and Rose. Mm -hmm. And a couple of older siblings, a couple of older brothers, a mm -hmm. couple of younger ones. And he remembered exactly where they fit in line. Mm -hmm. And he remembered all their names, mm -hmm. first names. Yep, yep. So, um, so later in the 90s or 2000s, when Rachel started doing genealogy, she was determined she was going to get to the bottom of it and find the rest of the family. So she went through all the census records because we knew Brainerd, Minnesota. We knew about the year Grandpa was born. We knew the names of the siblings. So she went line by line through all the census records for Crow Wing County, Minnesota. And lo and behold, what did she find? She found all the names. She found the twins. She found the right, the, the right order, the right names, everything. Only their last name was not Curran, it was Schultz. Oh. Yeah, that's what we said. We went, what? <laughs> so, as soon as... That's pretty good. Yeah, as soon, as soon as we meet Grandpa up at the pearly gates, we got some... That is the first thing I asked. He's got some splaining to do, because yeah, we don't know... Did he do it on purpose because he didn't want to be German? Did he do it can't because this that. was... Well, but it was, it was around no, World I, War I. I he well, might just have decided, you know, German's not a safe thing to be because you couldn't be German no. back then. Well, I don't know. I, I'm more inclined to think that he uh, got confused because I, he was awfully young when this happened. That's and very true. My, my theory is all, has always been that he was in the hospital with the burn. There was another kid in the hospital, too. The other kid, the other kid died. Oh. So they told his family because his family knew that he had died in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we found that out later, that mm -hmm. that's what they thought, that he had died. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they never looked for him. Oh. And uh, I think he just got confused because I cannot believe he would have lied to me that much. So no, because that you had a very good relationship. There was yeah. a switched identity. There's something yeah. going on. Somehow or another the identity mm. got switched, and that's been my theory as of to what might have happened. Because since that time, Rachel and I have gone to Brainerd, Minnesota. We've met a bunch of the Schultz relatives. Oh. They've told there was a story that Grandpa used to tell about how they had the um, first phonograph on yeah. the block, mm -hmm. and they would have it in the front window, you know, and play the Victrola, and the neighbors would gather around to hear this. Grandpa told us that story. Mm -hmm. Well, when we got up to Minnesota, somebody in the Schultz line had written a book about this Schultz genealogy. And there were two interesting facts in it. One was that they, the family had the first Victrola in Brainerd, Minnesota, and the neighbors would gather around. Mm -hmm. The other one was that there had been one child who was burned and killed in a school fire. Mm -hmm. So that's how we figured out that they thought Grandpa had died and he, he hadn't. Wow. So, so yeah. they didn't look for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And he didn't know to look for them. I right. think he had to have been very young. Because I don't believe that he was totally lying. I don't think so either. But he wasn't that kind of a person. But he did remember all the brothers and sisters' he names all and names. all these stories. So mm -hmm. it's kind of an inch, it's a paradox that we can never quite solve. Right. But it's all interesting stuff. So back to you. Yes. So you're in now. You've been to Detroit. You've been born in Detroit. You've moved back no, to I was Chicago. Born in Chicago. We went to Detroit. We came back to Chicago. Sorry, that's right. You were born in Chicago. You went to Detroit, started school in Detroit, then came back to Chicago, where you lived until you met Dad. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about your early years in school. Okay. Well, I went to um, Catholic school up to the middle of fourth grade. And. Um, and we moved away from there, and instead of putting me in another Catholic school, they, we lived about a half a block from the uh, public school, so that's where they enrolled me, was in the public school. And from then on, that's where I went to school. That was Alcott School up in uh, the near north side of Chicago. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And you had, a, I mean, you had a fair amount of freedom for being a school-aged child. I remember you talking about your roller skates. Oh yeah. I roller skated from dawn to dusk sometimes because I just felt like doing it. And um, 
I can remember going, just wandering around, going quite a ways away from home if my mother had known how far I went. She'd have worried about it, but she never knew. And things like that. I remember there was a, a house down the street that, well, it was a series of three houses that were totally empty, and we kids would go in there and wander around and everything. Oh, yeah. Um, Didn't some guy offer you candy or something oh one yes, time? yes, he offered me candy, and I won't tell you why he offered me the candy, but I immediately refused and took off and ran down a pair of a bunch of stairs that really had no steps on them, because I knew he couldn't follow me down there. And that was that. Oh. I never saw him again. Wow. Thank goodness. Was that, was that in one of those houses? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's why your mother tells you, don't play in abandoned houses. It's yes. a very bad idea. And don't take candy from strangers. <laughs> <laughs> don't take candy from strangers. Equally a bad so, idea. So how, how far, how many blocks was it from home to school when you were about that age? Well, when I was the, the uh, first, the first four years when I was going to Holy Name School, uh -huh. uh, it was uh, about three, four blocks. Three, four blocks. Okay, close. And um, later it was... Just I walked out my back door and walked down the alley, and I was in the schoolyard. Oh, real close. Yeah. Okay. And then at the very end, for the eighth grade, I we had moved again, and I took a streetcar to get to the. So I I didn't change yeah, schools. Yeah. No, but you were riding the streetcar by yourself then. Oh, yeah. And was that when you lived on Orchard? Mm-hmm. And when were you roller skating around at breakneck speed through the Lincoln Park Zoo? I don't remember. I think it was when I was on Orchard Street. I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't before that. Mm -hmm. so. I'm imagining you roller skating around the zoo there. It's a, Well, it's a, one thing I love to do, and I, I'm surprised at, at, at it now, where there was a hill where you could go down and then you had to take it. Oh, that was fun to go down on roller skates. Mm -hmm. if, if you didn't make your turn, you'd have run, wound up in the lagoon. <laughs> yes. Yep, down by the Lake Park Zoo. So, um, uh, did you have any pets? Sometimes we had a cat once in a while, things like that, but not very often. Didn't you have a dog? Yeah, well, we had a dog sometime or another. Hmm. I don't remember when the dog was around. It wasn't very long. What did you do in the summers? Didn't you go out to Lincoln Estates and visit your cousin? Oh, yeah. I was, I was thinking, what did I do in Chicago? Yeah, we'd uh, go out to Lincoln Estates. Where's, Lin where's Lincoln Estates? It's this side of, this side. It's east of um, of Joliet on um, it's east Lincoln of Highway. East, it's of, east Frankfurt. of Frankfurt, too. Yeah. East of Frankfurt. East of Frankfurt uh, on Lincoln Highway. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's it's just a place where you just go down a long road and there's a house here and a house mm -hmm. here and a house here. Mm -hmm. It wasn't anything. Um, right. But they had lots of land to play in, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you had a lot of family there. I had a lot of family there, yeah. Because your mother is one of how many kids was, were there in her? I think there were nine. Nine kids. And most all of them lived? Only one died at about the age of 13. The rest of them were... Oh. Grow. And did they to grow up and have families and things like that. Did okay. they live around Lincoln Estates? Okay. They did at the did. time. Oh, okay. okay. I think yeah. Uncle Joe and Aunt Agnes w lived in Washington, in Washington. D.C. Right? Yeah, and uh, Uncle Leo and Aunt Helen lived in California, but all the rest of them were in around that area. Local. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uncle, Uncle, what was that? Uncle Vet. His name was Sylvester. Uncle Vet had a still, right? Yeah, I never knew much about that. Yeah, I don't think that was talked about. But during the Depression, Uncle Uncle Vet had a still out there. We, yeah, there was there was a book written that we just found out. It was called Arden Acres because Lincoln Estates evidently was more like a like a vacation camp when it started. Mm -hmm. People come out there for the summer, and um, somebody came out there and she wrote a book. Somebody from Wisconsin wrote a book about it. So. All the names have been changed to protect the innocent and the not so innocent. <laughs> yeah. But it, you, if you look really hard, you can find that book, and there's a, a lot of the relatives' portraits are kind of in that book. Uncle Vetton is still, he wasn't called Uncle Vet, of course, but he was in that book. 
So I'd like to read that book. I know you can't take it out of the library. There's one copy in Frankfurt, but oh. that's the only one we found so far. Oh, so is that building use only? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's building use only. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can read it there. But yeah. that's it. Um, so, where, so your mom was from this area then? For if she was around east of Frankfurt. Well, she was. Uh, no, she was actually she was born in Iowa. Iowa. And um, they, her mother was running a rooming house or boarding house. I think it was a rooming house um, in the near north side of Chicago. Mm -hmm. That's where my mother and dad met. Uh -huh. And. Um, some of her younger siblings were still with the family, others mm -hmm. were uh, married and gone. I don't know mm -hmm. just what all the details are on that because I never knew. That was when I was too young to remember that kind of stuff. So, I, what, what brought her, them from Iowa to Chicago, you think? I have no idea. Okay. So, but Iowa girl. Well, she was born in Iowa, yeah. yeah. When your mom is actually went to college, didn't she? Yeah. She went to two years of college, enough to become a teacher. Mm, okay. And she did teach, I guess, a little bit, but uh, not for very long. Mm -hmm. She had, Park, was it Parkinson's that she had? Real early on, so. Oh. Yeah, she died She was very about young. 45 when she died. So. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. she had, so she was kind of ill pretty much your whole life. Yeah. So did you have brothers and sisters? One brother. One brother, okay. About six, seven years younger than me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, did he stay in the area? Um, he did and he didn't. I mean, he was gr he was brought up in the area. I think he graduated from high school in this area, but um, he lived in Denver. Denver for a mm -hmm. while with his with his wife and their and their family, and mm -hmm. then moved back here. But he lived in Muskegon. He was in Muskegon when he died. Muskegon. Okay. No, he was still in Denver. He died. Uncle Tom died in Denver. Oh, okay. I thought he'd. Been. So <laughs> then, um, then she came back Peggy, with her. Pet, yeah, yeah. His daughter Margaret and his wife, his widow, you know, went to Michigan to live okay. there. But he, because you went out there, that was the same. That was a year before Dad died. It was not a good time. Oh. So no. Uncle Tom was only forty-four. That's right. I took. And he had lung cancer. What yeah. What year was that? 78, 78, because my dad died in 79. That he, sounds right. Yeah, yeah, he had a, a stroke and he died. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a very bad couple of years there. Oh, yeah. Oh. But, was he older than you or younger than you? or My brother? Oh, well, He's about your six husband. years younger than me. Oh, six years, but your husband? Oh, he was older than I. Older than He was born in 1919, I was born in 1927. Oh, okay, 1919, yeah. Mm -hmm. So about so eight years. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Which makes a difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tell tell me about. Well, let's go back before you and Dad met. Let's go back to school. Um, you went to uh, Flower Technical High School, mm -hmm. and how did you happen to go there? Because that was a that was an all girls high school that you had to go a ways to get to, wasn't it? Yes, you not only had to go a ways to get to it, but you had to qualify to be allowed to go there. It was the only um, all girls parochial. High school in oh. in the city. I don't know what oh. whether it, there ever was another one, but it's uh, the building is still there, but it's something else now. <clears throat> and um, I had to take the streetcar from where I lived down to Lake Street and out Lake Street almost to Garfield Park hmm. to get to school and come back that way. And that's where I went for all four years of my high school. Nice. And the four years of high school, what year did you graduate then? 1944. 1944. So you basically were in high school the whole time of World War II, pretty much. Yeah. So what was that like? What did you, how did the war affect you? It didn't affect me personally a whole lot. We knew about it and uh, everybody was concerned. But at, in, in, when you're dead 12 or 13 years old, you just accept everything that's happening, at least I did. And um, I can remember towards the end of the war, I, we, um, the, we, some of our classes would be devoted to the news, what was going on. 
uh, so it was a, it was just winding down when I was getting ready to graduate. Um, did they use the high school students to for things like recycling drives or paper drives, or did they try to recruit you for Not volunteer work? I remember. Work? Interesting. Oh, okay. But I remember you saying that in one class you would listen to the radio every mm -hmm. day. Yeah, and that was that was very near the end of uh, when I graduated, uh -huh. and I can't remember for sure what class that was, whether it was uh, an English class or a history class. Mm -hmm. History seems more likely, but I can't remember for sure. And then you had a big map on the wall mm -hmm. and would follow the, the yeah. progress of the Allies yeah. as they were moving across Europe and, and pushing the Huns back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember ever hearing that word used. The Huns? Yeah. No? no? That's, no, that's more of a World War, World War I. One. World War I yes. <laughs> the Nazis. You say the Nazis, Nazis, you pretty yeah, well Nazis, got yeah. it covered. You're, yeah. you're good with Nazis. Um, so then you graduated from high school and you went to work? Mm -hmm. Where'd you work? Um, I worked for Hartford Insurance Company, but I'm thinking I had a job before that and I can't remember what it was. I think you said Montgomery Wards. What did I say just now? You said the Hartford, but you mm -hmm. said before the Hartford. Oh, yeah, I worked for Montgomery Wards for a while, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. And there again, I had to travel quite a ways to get to it. Sure. But uh, I don't know, we didn't think that much of it. it. You would worry now about a kid doing all those kind of things, but I was going all over the place when I was pretty young, mm -hmm. and nobody paid that much attention. Mm -hmm. so. So you worked in the office at their warehouse, you said, and then mm -hmm. you went downtown and worked at the Wrigley Building, right, for Hartford right. Insurance? Yeah. Because we've got pictures of you down there with your girlfriends working. Oh. Mm -hmm. So how did you meet Dad? Well, I had cousins that lived in Lincoln Estates, like we said before, mm -hmm. and I would go down out there during the summer and visit with them. And uh, there was a dance going on in Frankfurt at the school and my cousins and I went to the dance and um, my husband and his buddies also went to the dance hmm. and he came and asked me to dance and we danced the rest of the evening and um, he, he told me that he went home and told his aunt he met the girl he was going to marry. Oh. But. Um, it didn't happen quite that fast, and I certainly didn't know that was what he was thinking. But I had no phone, so he had we had to make arrangements before he dropped me off. And uh, that was I was working, I was living near Lincoln Park at that time, so I was a little farther away. So the only way we could get together is he'd drive up there and pick me up, and we'd go out on a date. What what year was that? Well, we got married in 48, uh -huh. but uh, I knew him for a little while before that, so it uh -huh. might have been 40, early 47. 47. Yeah. That's the reason I ask is there were no interstates. It must have been quite a drive. Probably so. was. <laughs> <laughs> I was up there. He didn't take me out here that <laughs> much. So. Yeah. Yeah. That was probably the most he ever was in the city in his life. He didn't much care for going into the city. No, and he didn't like, once, even after we were married, he did not like to drive the interstate. Oh. He never really got used to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if we'd go up to like the Museum of Science and Industry or uh, the Brookfield Zoo, we, mm -hmm. we never drove on an interstate. He no. avoided those like the plague if he could get away with it. So didn't never got used mm -hmm. to driving those. And you didn't drive at all yet. No, I didn't drive at all. I did, um, I can't remember just exactly when, but I decided I wanted to learn how to drive and uh, Having him teach me was not going to work, so the high school was offering that you could take a um, driving course, so that's what I did. I got my driver's license. And I was in junior high, yeah. I think. So um, when, after I got my driver's license, then I could drive and uh, he would try to tell me what to do about it. And I said, no, wait a minute, well, I know what I'm doing yeah, now. I learned how. So 1947, you met Dad at Lincoln Estates, and then you courted back and forth, and then you moved to Moni. 
Well, actually, my parents moved out to Sunnycrest, and I lived out there we, we, after a while, for about a year. Um, I lived there, and he'd come and get me there. Where and is Sunnycrest? Sunnycrest is... Um, it's just north of Alma Road. It was a little kind of a subdivision sort of oh. thing. It's right now basically backs up to the New Meyer. Oh, okay. So it's right yeah. in that area. So okay. pretty close. So, they so we, lived there. There. we mm -hmm. lived there for a while. And their house is still there, mm -hmm. but it doesn't look like it did when we lived there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole place has changed quite sure. a bit. So that was about 1946 or something like something that. Something like that, yeah. And then you decided to get married. Mm -hmm. So did you live, uh, where did you live when you first got married? Did you build the house first? Yeah, we had to because we looked for some place and housing was just impossible. You could not find housing at all. So finally, we decided, okay. Um, Pete's sister had a lot that she wasn't going to use, and so we bought the lot from her. We bought the, and and we built a little built a little bitty house, without any furnishings inside or anything like no that. No plumbing even was there. No plumbing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we did get electricity put in right away. That was an extra too. But um, where we, was the house located? Down the street. Oh, it's the one down there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's still down there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did eventually add on to it when when Christy came along because with two babies in a house that size, it just wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. So now it's a bigger house than it was then. Yeah. What did your husband do for a living when he? He um, worked for Cyclone Fence Company for a while. No, okay. that's your dad. That's my dad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I know, plumbing. it runs together when somebody Plum makes you plumbing, think. Hunting Dairy for a while. Dad worked at Hunting Dairy with his, with his father? Because I know uh -huh. Grandpa worked at Hunting Dairy. Yeah, he worked there for a while. Uh huh. And that was in Blue Island. Yeah, and I cannot remember for the life of me. Clark Oil. Clark Oil, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's where he, he worked, worked there the whole for a time. Long time. I knew, yeah. but I didn't know if maybe he had a job before that when you first got married. Yeah. What, what was he doing for Clark Oil? He was a welder. Oh, welder. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And I remember growing up that he always worked, you know, worked the day shift, but mm -hmm. a couple times a year they'd have a shutdown when they mm -hmm. shut down all of the equipment for cleaning and repair and things like that. Then he'd work an afternoon shift and we always liked it when there was a shutdown because then we got pizza or macaroni and cheese for dinner instead of you know meat and potatoes and good german home cooking but but we got to eat some junk food and that was i think the only time we ever ate junk food and even then it was you know homemade macaroni and cheese or i think i was 13 or 14 before i ever saw a pizza yeah. so wow mm -hmm. so tell me again about um, so so you built the house in Moni. And I would imagine Moni wasn't much like it is now. No, because they've added uh, so many little subdivisions mm -hmm. around it. The basic part of it was pretty much what, what it is now, but um, you go out and... So where did you do your grocery shopping? Um, wherever Pete went, because I couldn't drive at that time. Was there any groceries in Moni at the time when you first got married? Yeah, there was one down the street, but it was not a um, big grocery store. It was a place where you went to buy extra stuff. So I know a lot of times when I was a kid, we went to sea houses in Crete. Yeah. Was that? Mm -hmm. That was pretty much the place we went to the most. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was that the one at Chicago Road in Exchange, or was that a different one? No, this was right in the middle of Crete. Right, in right the on, yeah, yeah, right, just south of Exchange on Route 1. On Route 1, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and I remember and as a kid, a we just... Good store. It was a full grocery store then, oh, probably yeah. a lot like Burkhart's in Piatonia's now. Mm -hmm. But that was the one that there was in Crete. And then you went to St. Paul's. Mm -hmm. So how did that work out since you had been raised up till that point Catholic? And now you went to Dad's church, was, which was, you know, a German evangelical and Reformed Protestant church. Well, actually it worked out very well because uh, they, were, they to told me some things in Catholic school that I found hard to accept and St. Paul's just taught the way I did. So that was a, that was a good change. 
And um, did you have a big wedding at the church? Nope. We had a very little wedding at the parsonage. My cousin was my maid of honor, and his cousin mm -hmm. was his best man. And um, was that Gertrude and Billard? Mm -hmm. Who were the, stood up for you, Gert? Yeah. yeah. Were there other Dirkses? Here in Moni, that he was related to, or yeah. So, well, um, let's see. Mostly, they weren't Dirks's. Mostly, they were no. from that family. But uh -huh. uh, Powling Powell. was his aunt, and um, she had, had she been a Dirks? Yeah, Aunt Nettie was. Aunt Nettie was, was, a was grandpa. His his parents lived in. Um, Riverdale at the time, but they lived in Moni all along. Mm -hmm. And Grandpa's name was Wilmer. His sister he had two. Well, he actually had five sisters. There were um, there was Aunt Nettie, Aunt Nettie Powling, so Manetta. was Manetta and George Powling, and they lived in the, in this house, the house we live in at now. Of course, they lived out on the farm. Mm -hmm. They lived out on a farm on Will Center Road, um, just across from where Judy Ogala lives now. Mm -hmm. There was a farm there, and. I remember we would go out there when we were kids. They had chickens and, oh, yeah. you know, I remember them candling the eggs. I'd never seen anything like that. And a big horse trough in the front yard. Mm -hmm. So Willard and Dad were best buddies forever. They oh, piled yeah. around. And Willard didn't marry until he was 84. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. He had two sisters. They both died young. Bernice mm -hmm. died at about 10 years old from appendicitis, oh. which in the 20s or Good whenever it was. Yeah. Right. And Myrtle was, I guess you'd call her a spinster, because she was in her 40s and yeah. she'd never married. But everybody loved her. She was, a, um, you know, she taught Sunday school and, and all that. And she had, I don't remember if she had cancer or a heart attack or something, but she died fairly young, too. Oh. And so that, so that was there. My grandmother, great-grandmother, Freeze, um, uh, what was her name? Maida. Maida yeah. Freeze. She still lived in town. She and was right on the other side mm -hmm. of, the, of the railroad in a little house down there. Dorothy and Clarence Freitag. That was mm -hmm. my grandmother's sis gram yeah, mm -hmm. my grandmother's sister mm -hmm. lived here. Um, and then my dad's sister, uh, Shirley. Shirley and Fred Ramirez and their four boys lived in town. And... Ruth and Wally. Ruth was a Dirks before she got married. They lived down next to St. Paul. So yeah, the whole town was just littered with family. <laughs> Rachel has done um, uh, genealogical research and, and redone the records at St. Paul's. We all went to St. Paul's. That was a church. Uh, Ado Fries, my great-great-grandfather, mm -hmm. was instrumental in building the church. He was one of the first members of the church. Um, but she figured out that in 19... 27, I think we were related to about 95 or so percent yeah. of the population of Moni. So, old Moni families, Dierkses, Friezes, uh, Laysbergs, my grandfather and grandmother Laysberg. Um, the story goes that they lived in Chicago and were burned out during the Great Chicago Fire, mm -hmm. got on the IC and came out as far as Moni because they had relatives here and stayed. And stayed. He was yeah, one of the was first. Be a stop on the way, but it didn't mm. turn out that yeah. way. Okay. He was one of the first furniture makers and undertakers in town. Oh. His son-in-law, um, Reinhard Fries, was the first postmaster in town. Oh. Okay. Um, H.P. Laysberg had a, a furniture store. Ado Fries was one of the you know first odd fellows, town fathers, whatever you want to call it here. So. We go back forever wow. and ever and ever wow. in Moni. We go back to when Moni was just in its infancy. Which, so, which means I have to ask: Did they make you feel welcome? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a lovely thing. It was. Yeah, Dad's family was really nice people. They were very just, nice people, yeah. mm -hmm. both sides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, who was it? Wasn't it Dad's mother that really kind of taught you to cook? Yeah, pretty much. Because they were all very good cooks. Yeah. And Grandma, Grandma Dirks was a really good cook. Well, I can still remember three or four of them in the kitchen at one time, just bustling back and forth and chattering, chattering, and having a great time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we for years and years. And in fact, we still do that. If, if, you know, Cookie or Sue or anybody is Pam or over, 
mm -hmm. where everybody's in the kitchen and just, you know, your mouths are working as fast as your hands getting the meals prepared <laughs> and things like that. So, mm hmm. Um, golly, this is harder yeah. than I thought, you know, oh. to, I'm trying to think what else to ask. What was your wedding day like? <laughs> um, I don't know. We came out here and went to the parsonage and got married. Did your parents come? Or? Um, my mother didn't because she had died a long time before that, oh. but um, my dad was here. No, she mm -hmm. didn't die. But did she, she was only 45 when she died. Yeah, but I was thinking she died just before right, Lisa was, was born, born so fairly close. It, maybe she was pretty sick probably at the time then. That could be too. Because I don't think she had passed yet, but I, I it was pretty shortly after yeah, that. Yeah, I don't that remember she exactly when she did, did die. Mm -hmm. So did you start having children fairly soon after you got married, or was it a while? Did you wait? or? Um, we didn't wait, but it was a while. But it was a while? Yeah. Yeah. I lost one, and then I had Lisa. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, she was born in 51. So she was born oldest. in 51, and we were married in 48, so that was three years. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was a little, about like three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Christy came along, and then Sheila, and then I lost another one, and then Nancy came along, and then for some reason it just stopped. Yes. yes. You had babies in the 50s. Yeah, my babies were all born in the 50s. 1951 for the first, and 1959 for the last. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting decade for children. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about this picture. Hold so, on. I don't want my what was it? On I'm curious. Uh, so when you were raising your, your uh, children, what, what, how would your day flow? You know, like, uh, was it like uh, that you'd see them all off to school and you'd take care of stuff in the house and get ready for them to come back? or Pretty much. Was it, mm -hmm. okay? And they came home for lunch, didn't you guys? Yeah, because I... The school was right across the street from our house. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, was it the school that's right over? Yes. Down the street okay, here, yeah. right But, 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 okay, mm -hmm. here's where I tell all. Mm -hmm. I tell secrets. Okay. Mother likes to read. Mother loves to read. Mother's always been a reader. And I remember when we were growing up, we didn't have enough, I mean, you didn't, who nobody could have enough books, so we went to the library in Chicago Heights. And that was every two weeks. We each had a, a canvas tote bag, and we got to take ten books out. Ooh. That was it. That was that was the. the ten each. Ten each. Ten That's books each. A lot of books. Yeah, you had to stay. Yeah. Because so it was only every two weeks. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they were good readers too. That's because oh, it's yeah. almost once yeah, a day. Oh, very much so. And so I remember negotiating with Lisa because mm -hmm. I would usually have about twelve books that I wanted. So we, we'd have to, at the library, we'd have a negotiation session yeah. as to which ones, so that I could read her books. Because then, if I had 10 and she had 10, we could each read 20. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, that's a sidebar. We would go to school, and we got a newspaper every single day. I remember this like clockwork. We got a newspaper every single day. And the newspapers would pile up because you would read it, but there were things that you didn't get around to reading. Yeah. So mom's job was always going to be, I have to go through the paper pile. Because the paper pile would be about four feet high. It was behind dad's chair. Oh, yes, don't you look at me like that. <laughs> I don't remember this. Yes, you I don't remember, but I do remember this. So she would go through the paper pile, and we would go to school. And she'd be, when we left, she'd be sitting on the floor with the four foot high paper pile to go through. When we get back at home at lunchtime, she'd still be sitting on the floor, and there would be about a four inch pile to the right of the ones that could get thrown away and there were clippings everywhere all kinds because this was an article that you had to save and this is an article that you had to read and then paper pile maybe semi annually would get down to the bottom yes <laughs> that that sounds familiar <laughs> i know what you yeah. yes yeah it's like, need to think it over get the clipping yes because you never know. You never know, you know, never know what you're going to need. Oh, yeah. Okay, Christy wanted me to tell you about this. Ah. Now, I don't know if you want to take a picture of this or ah. not. Well, oh, I can see what was on the back of it. Oh, there's pictures everywhere. Okay. Now, which, which ones of you is, are these? Oh, this is, this is a picture of Lisa and me and Mom. 
mm -hmm. when we were little. Okay, would you hold it straight there or no? Oh, there you go. Ah, all right, have a little shot of that. Good, thank you. And this, Mother's in the Middle, is in high school. Hang on one second. Quite the dancer there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Quite the legs, huh? I've got you. Okay, good. So that was, that was, they, you were March, right? This was some sort of a pageant because you were all dressed up for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, I think that uh, it was, uh, I think we did the whole year, but yes, we were March. Wow. And we, those, those boys that are in there, those are girls too because it was an all girls high school. Oh, oh. Yeah, we had no boys. We had to, we had to pretend. So, so where did you go to high school? Hmm? Where did you go to high school? Oh, I went to Crete Moni, but that's mother. Oh, oh that's her. her yeah, okay. at Flower Technical High School. Oh, that was the Flower. City. Okay, that's mm -hmm. the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. So looking at all those girls, I just thought they must have been yours. But <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. nope. That's uh, the girl in the middle is me. Ah, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the others are all girls too. Ah. Wow. So mom was also quite an artist. Where you, if you hadn't met dad, you were saving up money. Yeah, I wanted to go to the Art Institute, of course, mm -hmm. for uh, further education. Mm -hmm. But uh, and mostly it was interior design, wasn't it? Yes, that's, that's what, what I was hoping to do: is be be in that interior design. Oh, nice! And uh, once we met and got married, I used the people didn't do that. Either. I mean, you got married and you gave up your career in those days. Well, that's very true. Besides which, but you I were couldn't. in the city and it would have been hard. Well, I wasn't in the city when we got married. No. No. So, but anyway, and I couldn't drive, so mm -hmm. I couldn't even eat, get mm -hmm. to the train. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So, uh, so you, you were out here your whole married life, right? In yeah. So how often would you get into Chicago? Oh, quite often because uh, my in-laws lived oh, in Chicago, so, you go there so and visit we, and see, we go in there. You know, yeah. Pretty regular, huh? Mm -hmm. okay. They lived in Riverdale, which is almost Chicago. Which is almost Chicago. Almost Chicago, yeah. yeah. How long would it take to drive up to the city? You think probably about, about an hour. About an hour, yeah. I remember we'd go because the only we did get on um, the what was it the Bishop Ford now it's called because you'd always go past Sherwin Williams Paint Factory, right? And it stunk like high heaven. And that was about the um, Pullman area. Pullman, yeah. yeah, just about a Pullman. So you do that. And then we'd go into Chicago Heights, because Chicago Heights had a big shopping district then, and we'd go shopping there and to the library there. Mm -hmm. And then you also, well, we had um, Park Forest Plaza. That was a little bit later, though, I think. Oh. Park Forest Plaza yeah, was that, more. I can remember when they put that in, so that had mm -hmm. to be a little later. Mm -hmm. What was your first car when you guys were married? I have no idea. It had five wheels on it. Five? Four here and one that you stood. <laughs> <She's sure laughs> I'm like, going, okay. But ask her what year um, Norman the Conqueror, yeah, William the Conqueror, um, what year was the Battle of Hastings? That she can tell you. So can I, so what? <laughs> I can't, tell me. Don't keep it a secret. 1066. 1066. 1066. But, but that's what I mean. You, you've you always been interested in education, in uh -huh. higher learning, in uh -huh. those kind of things. Uh -huh. So what kind of car it was would not have been right. super well, significant. Well, I was interested in art too because it, I don't know what brought it to my mind, but I was thinking about I did, um, when I was in high school, twice I was um, given the privilege of going down to the Art Institute for, mm. for uh, lessons, mm -hmm. and I thoroughly enjoyed that. That's nice. And, uh, so when your daughters were young, did you ever take them down to the museums or things like that? Oh, yeah. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, we did. We tried to get some to most of them. I, think, I don't think you missed a whole lot, did you? We did what you would call now a staycation. So our vacations were staycations and when we had a vacation we would go to you know the Museum of Science and Industry or the Natural History Museum or to the zoo those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Art Institute, the, uh, the fish place. The fish place, Shed the Aquarium. Shed Aquarium. Shed Aquarium. Yeah. We went to the fish place and I think through the years your artistic talents have come out 
more in needlework than any other way. You've yeah, I've done a lot of that. Oh. Yeah. And also another thing you did, you were a Girl Scout leader. Yeah. But predominantly, you I remember you being a Sunday school teacher. Mm -hmm. And see, when I moved back, I remember she was an election judge. Yeah, I was an election years. judge for quite a few years. The Sunday school teacher, though, I, I remember that as being far and away above what a normal Sunday school teacher would teach. Hmm. You don't remember that? No. That, I don't you know, know what you're talking about. We would learn about, we, it, you, it would be more of a comparative religion class. I would say than a Sunday school because I remember you taking us on field trips to a synagogue and to uh, you know a, a Muslim just Bap Baptist a Catholic church things like that so that we could understand other religions as well. Mm -hmm. and on a Sunday as part of Sunday school? No, oh. we usually didn't go during Sunday oh, school. Or other days of the week. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we learned a lot about the history. The Bible is history. The history mm -hmm. of the Bible. The history of the area. The history of oh. the near east we did take a trip i know down to the oriental institute at the university of chicago to a see lot their of wonderful uh, mm -hmm. museums and things in oh, chicago sure. and yeah they managed to mm -hmm. see a lot of them yeah yeah i think you need to talk about her job at the um tour place the, the oh. travel agency because so, those are pretty big in the 70s it so was, was. Mm -hmm. So, growing up, you didn't work. Tell me about your first job after you went back, you re-entered the workforce. <laughs> after I re-entered the workforce? Mm -hmm. I don't remember. After children. Sears. Oh, okay. Yeah, I worked at Sears for a while. What did I do at Sears? You worked in the drapery department. I worked in the drapery department. She's absolutely right. Oh. See, it's a good thing you got her because she remembers and... and uh, it's all a long time ago. It's, it's a long time yeah. ago, yes. But you worked in the drapery department for a, a lot of years. You started working there when Lisa was ready to go to college because mm -hmm. you had to have, find the money to send Lisa to college. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Which Sears was this? The one in Park Forest. The one in Park Forest. Oh, mm -hmm. that one. Okay, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. yeah. By that time, I had learned to drive so okay. I could take myself to a job. Okay. Mm -hmm. I couldn't take myself to a job without mm -hmm. learning to drive. But Sears was a rotten company. I mean, that, was, that hit you very hard because what Sears did is one day they just decided their bottom line needed trimming. So they took all long-term employees, ones that were just about to be vested in their profit sharing. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And we were gone. Yep. They just axed them all, you know, mm -hmm. with no anything. No reason whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's just, we were gone. Yep. Wow. Yep. Would that have been the late 60s or early 70s? Or yeah, it would have been the probably. yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, after nineteen seventy four, they weren't allowed to do that anymore. Yeah, well, it would have been just before that because Lisa, yeah. I graduated in seventy two. Lisa graduated in in sixty nine. Yeah, and it would have been you know fairly right in there, right yeah. in that area. Yeah, seventy seventy one, somewhere in that yeah. vicinity. Yep, mm -hmm. and then you went to work for Montgomery Wards. Mm -hmm. And there you worked in the cash office, and then you went to work for the Bank of Homewood. Oh, and yeah, after I that, that, yeah, and after that, you went where Margaret is talking about, and that was Wozni Travel in Stager. Travel in Stager, yeah. And uh, that was a job I loved. Oh. I didn't think that I would possibly qualify, so I took a class um, in travel agency, and. Um, once I had that, then I figured I could go and apply. So mm -hmm. I went and talked to John Wozniak, and they hired me almost immediately. And I worked for them for quite a while mm -hmm. and uh, loved it. Oh, very nice. Didn't get any salary. I got commission. Ah. So, but I also got some privileges on tra traveling, and that's how I got a chance to go to quite a few nice places. So where was your mm -hmm. first trip out of the country? Because you and Dad didn't travel no, at all. he wasn't a traveler. He, he would go any place at all if he could sleep in his own bed at night. Ah, uh, yes. Well, <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> I see. So. But by this point, did, had he already passed by the time you worked at the travel agency? Oh, yeah. 
so yeah, you were kind of a little bit more free to travel. I was able to do what I without, what I wanted to do as far as traveling was concerned. Him. Yeah. And uh, there were things that they called fam trips, meaning familiarization trips, uh -huh. and you could. Um, I think that was the first trip out of the country was a familiar day. Where did you Where go? Where did I go? Spain. Spain? Oh yes, uh, the first one. So it's sort of like, we'll take you to Spain so that you know how to talk about it so other people can... Exactly. Ah. Yeah. yeah. You it, pay us like 50 bucks or something. I mean, it was really, really... Oh, it was really, very reasonable. Yeah, really cheap. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that covered your airfare, it covered your hotel, covered most of your meals. Mm. And... Um, the were That's wonderful. Yeah. So during that period, you said about making sure that each of your daughters, each of the four of us, got a trip wherever we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Ah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh -huh. who got to go where? That's a nice mother. <laughs> it was a nice mother, <laughs> absolutely. Well, yeah. it's, it's a way of telling, the, teaching the kids that uh, people are very similar all over the world. It's people who live in Germany are not different from people who live in England or from people who live in the United States. Yeah. And so, do you remember who who got what trips? No. Yes, you do. Lisa no. went to well. Nancy went to Hawaii. Yeah. And I was. I think I was the first one. I think you were. Yeah. We took a two-week bus trip through England and Scotland and Wales. That was, that was nice. wonderful. Pretty flippin' awesome. It was. We had a ball. It was great. It was great. Were you in high school? No. Oh, no, 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 no. This didn't start until, because I had Rachel and Abby both were born by the time Dad passed away. Because he died in 1979. Oh my God. Yeah. He was only 59. And I didn't do any of these kind of things until no. I was yeah. on my own. So Rachel and Abby were born. I was married. They were um, in grade school somewhere, junior high, you know, okay. late, late, I think Rachel maybe was in seventh or eighth grade, and, and we went for the week, because they went to um, Seattle to a family reunion the same time we were in England. Yeah. Hmm. So I was first, and then Lisa and Mom went to Ireland, you went to, on a bus trip to Ireland, right. and Nancy and you went to Hawaii, and you and Sheila went to Germany. Yeah. So. Oh. Mm -hmm. And this would have been the 80s, I guess. From 80s, to, yeah, I think something no, like that. No, I think it was even into the, the 90s. 90s. Oh, into the 90s? Yeah, oh. I think the 90s. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, because Abby was born in 90s, in 86, so it would have been the 90s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And oh. I did. Yeah, late 80s, early 90s, yeah. something like that. And I did other trips, too, that, uh, mm -hmm. that I didn't take the kids along. You uh -huh. went to Jamaica, you went on a Scandinavian cruise. That was nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, listen to that. <laughs> yeah, the Scandinavian cruise. You went to Hawaii. I think we counted it up just recently when we had your birthday party because Rachel had found a yeah. list of all your trips. I wondered where that list went. Yep, well, she found it in a, in a bunch of paper somewhere. Mm -hmm. And you, I think, went to Hawaii s between six and eight times. Several oh. times. I yeah. loved Hawaii. Mm -hmm. She loves Hawaii. Nice. Loves Hawaii. I wish she had that job and I could be one of your children. I know. I know. <laughs> well, I, I think what you need to do is go and work for a travel agency. Yeah. Yeah. They don't but really have them now. No, like they, they don't. The, no, the, no, internet, they don't. the internet ate the travel agencies, I'm afraid. <laughs> they <laughs> That's right. exactly what happened. Unless they're doing group things, you don't really see yeah. that. But but what, where, where, was, where was the one place that you always wanted to go and you had never been? No. No. <laughs> Hawaii is the one thing I can think of. No, because in high school you took French. Oh, I went to Paris. You wanted to go to Paris. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. Mm. It was wonderful. Yeah. Dave and I took her to Paris. Mm. Oh, nice. We went down to one of the concerts in Grand Park and we had a brochure for Paris. Oh. And, and there were three tickets in it. Oh. Yeah. So oh, oh. we went to Paris, and Paris was as wonderful as you would have thought it was supposed to be. But I also loved England. I loved mm -hmm. London. Mm -hmm. I what, loved Honolulu. What's your favorite things to do when you would travel like that? 
I, I don't know everything. Everything, okay. Everything. Well, you know, some folks like the museums, some folks like to eat, some folks want to go sightseeing, you know. It's a, well, it's, museums were important. Uh -huh. I think you always and you always said it was it was good to travel with all four of us because we each brought something different right mm -hmm. to the trip that that Lisa when she goes with Lisa Lisa would like to find the music mm -hmm. anything to do with music mm -hmm. so they went to Ireland and were in the pubs listening to the you know the trad bands with the Baudran mm -hmm. and the and the mm -hmm. Irish fiddle and things mm -hmm. like yeah. that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um I, Sheila, I think you guys ate your way through Germany pretty well. <laughs> well, we didn't just eat our way through Germany because I can still remember being on, um, I don't remember if it was a bus or a train, I think it was a train going someplace and um, someone coming up and talking to her in German because she looked German and she sounded German and uh, he thought of course she was German but she didn't understand what he was saying at all. So, yeah. um, and then you and Nancy went and, and to England as well, and, and she was doing research on, on some Canadian regiment because they oh, do yeah. reenactments, mm -hmm. and she was doing that. And, and I like to go to, we went to plays a lot. We went and saw mm -hmm. a few Andrew Lloyd Webber plays yeah. in, in we London. We saw Cats for mm -hmm. one. We saw Cats, we saw Starlight Express, we saw Aspects of Love, well, quite a few, because we've been on a couple of different trips. So. Oh. She passed that along to everybody. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I loved being a travel agent. I loved being able to go and do all those yeah. kind of things. All I can say is, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so what did you tell your Sunday school students when you were about to zip off for a trip? I don't think um, they overlapped. I think oh, the Sunday school yeah. teaching was overlapped. over by the time the travel oh, okay. started. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. But, you know, I think you had to, you really had to, base your life in the town you lived in because uh -huh. that's what people did. You didn't travel. I mean, you, this the traveling came later, but when uh -huh. we were growing up, we were pretty money bound. I mean, you you would go to Crete to the grocery store because there wasn't any money. You would go to Chicago Heights to, uh -huh. you know, if you were going to shop for clothes or something like that. Or but, go to the library. Or go to the library. Uh huh. But you made all of our clothes when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. You taught me to sew. You were an avid up till currently, she crochets blankets for the, and they donate them to Stroger Hospital. So, you've made hundreds and hundreds of baby blankets and booties, and hats, to donate to to the the babies at Stroger's Hospital. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I don't know if they're doing that anymore. I don't know, because Sandy sure. Malone was in charge of that. Yeah. And she's passed. Yeah. So. But, uh, no, I liked doing something like that with my hands. I could, even though I can't do a whole lot of stuff anymore because they're, they just don't look like they used to. Things but, change, uh, yeah. But I still oh. can crochet and knit. Yeah. So, was it very difficult to raise your daughters in a town like Moni back at the time? No. Was like a, so you didn't have to worry about them getting into trouble or things like that or no. uh, of various sorts? We were yeah. practically angels. Practically angels. Practically. Okay. We were, we were doggone close okay. to being angels. <laughs> oh, yes. That's the funniest thing she said well, yet. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. I know, because really, I mean, you could take the practically out. And, oh, I and You'd see. be a lot closer to the truth that, that, that we were just... The uh, reason I ask is, you know, that, uh, one way of looking at it would be, well, a small town like this, you know, there's so many farm roads to slip off to for things, you know. Yeah. Another way of looking at it is, eh, people have chores and things to do, so they get out of school, they come home, they kept busy until bedtime, and, and then, you know, that, that sort of thing. So I didn't know which version was real. Well, you well, know, small towns, everybody knows everything. So you didn't, you didn't get away You couldn't with get away with much as a oh. kid, because somebody's parent was always somewhere around Some, watching. Oh, okay. <laughs> But I remember as we were kids, basically, I, I think it was 9 o'clock in the summer when there was no school. I think 9 o'clock, we could not go outside before 9 o'clock. But when 9 o'clock, I mean, I remember looking at the clock, and when 9 o'clock hit, the door would open and psh, out we would go, and we would be gone playing, doing something till mm -hmm. lunchtime, mm -hmm. and then come back and have 
you know, a sandwich or gla we had glass pudding a lot. That's okay. Glass pudding for dessert. And, um, and then going out in the afternoon again until dinner time. Cool. And you never saw it. And then after dinner, you stayed in the yard because mm. it was getting dark and you couldn't go any farther than your own and yard. And at 10 o'clock, mm. the fire siren rang and it was curfew time. Yep, yep. and you were done. Mm -hmm. what, 10 o'clock every night? Every, every night. night. Every night. Oh. 10 o'clock. The fire siren rang and that was curfew and oh. you, you were done. But we were already in the oh, yard. Okay. They, were, they were they were good kids though. Oh. We we were raised in a neighborhood of girls, if I recall, too. There, yeah, there were, were very good, few boys. Very few boys. Chucky and, and uh, But Chucky Mark Small Watts. Yeah, Chucky mm -hmm. well Mark Rod Yeah, Chucky Smallin was younger than me and Dick was older because the Smallins lived next door and they were gonna have four kids, Dick, Deb, Sue and Chuck. Oh. And Dick was old. You know, he was probably he was old. He was like seven years older than me. Uh, uh -huh. And Chuck was probably about the same younger than me. No, no. Chuck's yeah. a year older than me. How many years younger than me are you? Five. So, so he was six. Four. And I said no, seven. No, no, no. Four. He's older than me. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, he was a little... <laughs> at four years old, be, he was a baby. turning that Baby. Down, that... Both Camera on the two of us? <laughs> no, 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 yeah. uh, no, sorry, that doesn't work that way. See, the funny thing is, is Chuck, Sue, Deb, and that's my cousins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. They were our neighbors. neighbors. Sue was my age, and we were best friends oh. all through grade school. Oh, yeah. Um, Their neighbor was my aunt. Yep. My dad's sister. Yeah. Yeah. So were the next door neighbor's kids constantly running in and out of your house? Pretty much. Pretty much? Yeah. Well, I don't think anybody ran in the yeah. house. I mean, in the oh. summer, you were out. But I mean, yeah. but in other words, were the houses open to each other? Yeah. So it's oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Mrs. Smullen was a big baker next door, mm -hmm. and she would bake bread once a week. Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> she could smell that bread, and we'd all come over, and, and if you were good, not every week you didn't get it, <sighs> but, if, but if, you know, the stars were in alignment, she'd slice you off this big, thick, soft, hot piece of bread and then slather on the butter and then sugar not even mm -hmm. cinnamon just sugar that's what my dad used to have. oh heaven and mrs Smullen was hilarious because she could do the best julia child impersonation you ever yes, saw she was oh. great she zapped the chicken and put it in the pot and the... <laughs> she was just a hoot a hoot mm -hmm. yeah it's and my fun. mom was sitting at the paper pile going through it <laughs> <laughs> Just reading. Yep. 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 So. Well, she was uh, nourishing you in other ways. <laughs> well, absolutely. I mean, it really was. If you if you look back now, Moni in those days, at least from my perspective, mm -hmm. and I think Margaret could say the same, mm -hmm. the parents were there a lot. The moms mm -hmm. were home. They were mm -hmm. not you know, in the workforce mm -hmm. as much. So they were there to just be mm -hmm. in the background and ride herd. And as a child, you played, you went to school, you you did your um, homework. I beg your pardon. And, um, you know, the, the biggest antics, the, the biggest thing I can remember as like a, an antic was that Sue and I, we weren't in school yet, and Deb and Lisa, who are the older sisters, were off to school, and we were going to trick them when they got home. Mm -hmm. So we went into our garage and pulled out everything that we could find. You know, the toys, the tools, the, the we had a rockaway, it was a, you know, a line, slide that you rocked on. And then we threw them all over the backyard, we broke branches off the trees, we bent them and broke them, and then when they came home to school, we said, oh, Oh my gosh, when you guys were in school, there was a tornado. <laughs> and they didn't believe us. And we really were perplexed. I mean, like, why don't they believe us? I mean, it just looked like a tornado, but no. And then we'd run away from home. That was another big... Oh, yeah. That was a, yeah, we did that all the time. Oh, yeah. We ran away from home, the whole neighborhood. And we they got, got all their little things together. Uh-huh. And yep. uh, their do our dolls, we'd get a snack, maybe a peanut some peanut butter crackers or something. A wagon so they can pull things. Everybody got their wagons. We'd hook the wagons up into like a little caravan. Mm -hmm. And then we'd walk down the block. Couldn't cross the street. We'd walk down to the end of the block and come back. <laughs> we practiced running away from home. I cannot tell you how many times. 
And then every year, it was the fireman's picnic at the, at the fairgrounds. There was a carnival. And you couldn't go there because there were mm -hmm. carnival people there. Oh, and it was not. This is strangers. Mm -hmm. So we could see it from our house. So we'd watch them setting up the carnival and get more and more excited. And then we would have our own carnival practicing again oh. for the carnival. And we had a willow tree that we'd make tickets and that, you know, every, you, so you'd have to give a ticket to ride on the weeping willow and you could grab the willows and, you know, swing out and that was one ride. And then we had the aforementioned Rockaway, which was probably the most wonderful toy I ever had. It, yeah, it was like a seesaw on a, on a, on a skid, like a, a roller thing, yeah. and you'd sit on each end of it and it would rock back and forth. And we had a song. You just sit there for hours singing, rock away on the rock away, rock away on the rock away. That was a couple of tickets to ride on the rock away. And then at the end of the carnival, we would have fireworks. And with that, the, obviously, gravel road in front of the house, there was no paved street. We would sit there with our box of crayons and color the rocks. Yes. And then when it was time for the fireworks, everybody had handfuls of rocks and you just shoot. Throw them up into the air, and that was the um, that was. And then we practiced being Mary Poppins. I can't remember if Mary Poppins was with the carnival or if it was a separate exciting thing. But we had a picnic table, and everybody got their umbrellas and jumped off the umbrella to see who could fly. Nobody even tried to get on the roof yeah. of the house. Yeah, over there. Just, just on the top <laughs> of mm -hmm. the picnic table. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Elan, we made our own fun back in those yeah. days. <laughs> there you go. And the big treat was when we would get a nickel, or a, I think it was right. seven cents for a popsicle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'd walk up to Brock Miller's with the with the wagon, with the littler kids in the wagon, and everybody got a popsicle and walked all the way back. Mm -hmm. For Bub's daddies, hmm? Bub's daddies and bazooka. Yeah, they had come up there, and Mrs. M D taught piano. To everybody in town, every little girl anyway in town, mm -hmm. and her piano studio, she lived right next to the post office, mm -hmm. so we would go up there, and she, I think she gave us a discount because there were four of us taking piano, but I have our, our lesson books still, and it was 75 cents a lesson oh. to go and take piano from Mrs. M.D. And uh, how carefully, did, did you and the other mothers like arrange all these things in the background? Uh, I don't remember uh, arranging them. No, no. I did, think they just kind of happened. They just kind of happened? Yes, because we were hanging around outside all day. Uh, we okay. never went inside. Well, in the in summer. The summer. Uh, in the yeah. summer. So uh, I'm curious though, were there, were there any issues in Moni that where the women were you know, kind of would get together and talk things over and try to figure out what's going on? And, and uh, were, were there any issues in town during those decades at all? Or was everything just peaceful? I don't remember anything. Yeah, that's yeah, centennial. centennial. Yeah. That was in 74. That was a big deal. Okay. But as far as bad things going on, I don't know. There was a women's club in town. Mm -hmm. But you never belonged to the women's no, club. No, I never belonged to it. Mm -hmm. I had to talk at the women's club once. It was horrible. Really? Oh. Oh. See, well, the thing is, she was. you have to remember, she only moved to town in 1948. She was an outlander. <laughs> yeah. She was kind of. I was very definitely. And from Chicago. And from Chicago. <laughs> oh yeah. So, you know, I think that was the thing. I think I don't think you were ever ostracized on purpose by any no. means. But, but there's a difference if you grow up in town and you knew kids from the, the you know, mm -hmm. and everybody's related to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And if you came in, I think you felt that to a certain. Never felt discriminated against, but always felt. Yeah. You know. Well, and I never was easy with uh, mingling with people either, and I still am not. Okay. And um, I, I learned there are certain things that you do. You, for instance, you sitting next to somebody and you'll just make a remark, and all of a sudden they're willing to talk to you. But you have to know to make that move, and mm -hmm. it took me a while to learn that kind of stuff. You were right. very shy. I was very you shy. You always have more of an introverted, mm -hmm. shy personality. That's why I'm uh, such an introvert. Uh, That's how I got that. There it is. Yeah. Uh, well, I was just uh, the reason I was asking. I just have trouble believing there's a town that doesn't have things to talk about for decades. You know, like shall this thing happen or shall that thing happen or or what are we going to do now that the little grocery store is closed or or 
or what are you going to do? Remember, if, if, the, uh, if that uh, was going on, it was going on without me. Ah, interesting. Well, I remember you always saying, you know what, I never hear the gossip. No. I never hear the gossip. And, uh -huh. and also the second line of that is, people don't tell you the gossip if you don't gossip back. You gotta yeah. have, yes. Yeah, yeah you, you got a tit for tat. Yeah. And if you don't, you just don't, you know, and it was not like, you know, saying, oh my gosh, I'm better because I don't gossip. You just, if you don't, got, right, if you don't give it, yeah. you don't get it. That's true. Yeah, and, and I just don't think you ever... I never, I no, never I wouldn't did, have no. thought the same about Aunt B and Aunt Ruth. Those two probably knew everything. <laughs> Aunt B and Aunt Ruth, I believe, did. I, no, believe, I believe they, they did know too. everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they were much more forceful, big kind of personalities. They were and, tall. But very different from but, each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the same one who was yeah. Julia yeah. Child. Oh. Yeah. Ruth and B were sisters. And one would be like the perfect housekeeper. The other one is a little bit more creative. And Aunt Ruth was always more different. Aunt B, her house was clean constantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always clean. Yeah. Now, and I remember, I remember going over there too, and, and Mr. Smolin would be sitting and watching combat on TV. He he was in the war, and Dad wasn't. Dad had a heart murmur, and he yeah. and he, he was not in the war. I think that always bothered him a little bit, that he he wanted to join up but wasn't able yeah, to. Yeah, he wasn't able. Yeah, yeah. And then there was a little bit when Aunt Shirley came back. My my um, aunt was she married she was married to the only Moni boy that was actually killed in World War Two. Oh. Yeah, there was just the one, Kenny Doss. It's the Doss Malone Legion post, and she okay. was married to Kenny. And then um, her best friend, her first cousin Ruth, was also a cousin of mine, was married to Wally Erickson, and they were war brides, not war brides, but they were young brides and went and lived in the army camps with their husbands. And and Wally was in a lot of battles. He was at the Battle of the Bulge, she was someplace else, and, but he came mm -hmm. home. But Kenny uh, landed at Anzio mm -hmm. and was killed at, at Anzio. And um, after that, she remarried fairly soon, a couple of years after that, and she married Wilfredo Ramirez. Wilfredo Ramirez from Texas, right on the borderline of Texas. And um, you can imagine, Moni was German through and through, generations German, and and here she comes with Wilfredo Ramirez. But I remember that Dad always, you know, that there there was a little e -e 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 about that. But mm -hmm. but Dad, I was always one hundred percent on Uncle Freddie's side, and Absolutely. they were married for. He just worshipped the ground she walked on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From then on until, and they raised four boys in town, and you know, and it it passed. So I mean, it was one of those kind of things that. There might, it could have been an incident, but it just never was, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I was always really proud of Daddy for that. That's very nice. The other thing I know is, is the St. Paul Cemetery is always, because, you know, we know everybody who's there. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're all relatives or friends or something else. So on um, <clears throat> Sundays after church, a lot of times we would just take a walk through the cemetery. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, entertainment, and Dad would tell us about it. And there was one gravestone I always remember was sideways, and that was because he'd committed suicide. Oh. Yeah, whoever was buried there had committed suicide, and oh. that was, my dad was on the church council at the time, it was probably in the 50s, and up until that point, anybody who had done that would not be allowed to be buried in the cemetery at all. They could not be in hallowed ground, and that one he argued for and said he should be buried there, and they, they put the the stone sideways Just because of it, but marker. he was buried in the cemetery, yeah. Oh, how interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I haven't thought about that in years. Mm-hmm, yeah. But, uh, but learning about people by walking through the cemetery, it's like, it's like the Spoon River Anthology, you know? <laughs> it's yeah. sort of, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. sort of a everybody's yeah. story. Yep, and that's what we did, so. Well, I'm out of questions. Anybody else? Uh, Will, you're always good for a few questions. <laughs> well, um, I, 
I think my brain's blank at the moment. Uh, Is there anything that we've missed that you'd like to mention or talk about? Something about yeah. Moni, perhaps the impression when you came in here, um, or the, yeah. the most influential person, maybe the most influential person in your life. I suppose that would have been my father. Because mm -hmm. he and I were very close. And uh, I could say anything to him, tell him anything. Uh, he would he would share with me. Um, That's very nice to hear. Yeah. I don't think he ever treated you like a child. No, he yeah. treated me like an equal and from actually, early on. And actually, now that you mention it, I guess there is something. Uh, this is going in a permanent archive. Is there anything that you'd like to tell people who might be looking at the archive later about Moni? Since I'm, I'm, my interest is folks who lived in Moni, is there anything about Moni that you think you'd like to uh, impress on folks as something worth uh, you know, taking away from this or remembering? Or, uh... Well, I know it was a good place to, uh, to live and a good place to raise children. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of good people in this town. Mm -hmm. um, I can't think of any specific thing. Okay. I think uh, you've said to us in the past that, you know, growing up in, in Chicago, you didn't build the kind of community that there was right. in Moni, and that one of the most important things to you was to give that to your children, that sense of community, yeah. the, the sense of, of, of a larger family Mm -hmm. other than, you know, your biological family or your nuclear family, your extended family, but even larger, mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. church family, your community, and that you could get, and that, that you did. Yeah, that is something I never had as a child because mm -hmm. you just didn't in the city. Mm -hmm. um, That's interesting. Yeah. So when you first moved out here, was the fairgrounds still, do they still have dances and things where people mm -hmm. would come and get together? Yeah. And, yeah, we used to go to the dances over there. Ah, speaking of community, that raised yeah. the, got me thinking about. So you yeah. used to go to the dances over there. Oh right? yeah, and Pete loved to dance. Uh -huh. He would dance with me, and if I felt like sitting one out, he'd find somebody else to dance with. He he danced every dance. He loved it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And how long did that last? How how long was that? I can't even tell you. Okay. I can okay. actually. 1972. Okay. Because I got married in 1972, and I felt very grown up because I could go to the fireman's dance. And it was a roller rink at the time, yeah. but you, they and the, they didn't have dances often, just the fireman's ball mm -hmm. at Thanksgiving, yeah. and that I was old enough. So in 1972, I went. And they they probably maybe had one more or two more after that, if that. Mm -hmm. So the early right. 70s, they went on. They were dances there until at least then, oh. at least 1972. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and after that closed, did the folks in Moni, was there any place else where people tended to get together to do things like that? Or? Not that I can remember. I, okay. I do not think so, and I think that has been the detriment of the town. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we've had is that you, you had the firemen's picnic mm -hmm. once a year in the summer. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing. Uh-uh, no, that was once a year. You know, and the carnival came to town, and there was bingo, and yeah. you know the firefighters had contests with you know their hoses and whatnot. Water but, ball. Yeah, water ball contests. Yeah. But but that was it. And I think part of that was because Moni, well, the cut in the railroad has always been blamed for the downfall of Moni, and I think there's a lot of truth to that. When the railroad came through, it was 1926, and it and it. Mm -hmm killed the business district of town, which had mm. been right along the railroad. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that Moni ever had, from that time on, had enough of the forward-thinking leadership in town to fight against that. It was a big mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. and, and it never quite bounced back from that. I think we're close enough to the city to be able to go out of town to get what you need, mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. far enough away to have to be the community and yeah. the second thing that happened was Moni never had their own high school oh, right. ever it was always I don't Pete believe Moni consolidated. Yeah. well first my dad when he went to high school he went to Piatone oh that's right 
Mm -hmm. My mom went it, to Bloom. It was split, right? Bloom, yeah, some people right. went to Bloom, Bloom some people went to Bloom. Right, right. Yeah. right. And so yeah. that fragments a town. You know, mm -hmm. if you if you have a high school team that you can root on and all the kids go there and there, there's a, it's a lot of unifying forces that way. And uh -huh. Mooney have never really quite had it because of some uh -huh. of those kind of things uh -huh. through the years. And so... Um, and so for a while at least things like uh, the 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 dance hall and the roller rink kind of help bind right. people together. Right, right. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, I think uh, so. Uh-huh, I do think I so. And um, now, the you know, you have the grade school, but they still go to Crete Monita High mm -hmm. School. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just never gotten past that, and I don't know how you do. And and I think Moni suffered because of some of those things, but society in general mm -hmm. changed. Yeah, part you of the know. general change, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't remember Moni ever having what you would call a center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, not a town center. Not a town center, no. Not a town square, not a place where people gathered, really. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's partly the very little business in town. Right. But it's partly mm -hmm. just, you know, mm -hmm. I, it's, it's never been cohesive. Right. Is that in part because of it being so easy for so many folks to live on the farms around? or Because this was, you know, like an, an accessory to the farm economy for a long time, I think. Yes? Mm -hmm. No? Yes. Um, yeah, when he, people didn't go as far away as they did, they uh -huh. there was more in town. Yeah, but mm -hmm. when the Depression came, we lost banks. We yeah. never oh, really had right. an official bank here right. after that. Uh -huh. no. The only grocery store I remember was Brock Miller's, and that was just a as need kind of. Grocery it was like store. a 7-Eleven kind of mm -hmm. grocery mm -hmm. store, kind of way. Mm -hmm. But before mm -hmm. the Depression and the cut, which were kind of, sort of simultaneous. Very close. Yeah. There were four banks in Moni. Mm -hmm. There was a college, you know, a German-speaking college. Oh. In Moni, oh. there were three, four hotels. Mm -hmm. You know, that was it, there were a couple of furniture stores. Couple of grocery stores, Candy Kitchen, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the telephone company building, the a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the size of the town that it was, it was mm -hmm. a a well, you know, running community. But at that point, I don't know exactly, you know, how the stars aligned to to break it down. But it did, and it's never really mm -hmm. been that sort of a town again. Right. Well, it's too easy to get in a car and go someplace rather than trying to build something new here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They yeah. had, what, trolley car tracks to Chicago Heights? Were That's those right. still around? Yeah. Do you remember those at all? I don't really remember them, but uh, I remember we had them. Is that my phone? Yeah. 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 That's fine. Yeah, there was a, there was the, the, a stop of the Moni Depot. I remember it as a kid. Um, it's probably Nancy. We'll call her back. Okay. Um, but um, so so the town the IC stopped in Moni. Mm -hmm. Plus there was another. It was called the Interurban, and oh, right. it was Interurban, right. tracks that came from Chicago Heights and Glenwood out yeah. from there through Moni, and I don't even know. But that was gone years before. I think right. I don't know if it was. I don't think it was still here in '48 when you oh, moved no, to town. No. Even no, those things but, are gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. So now that you have the subdivisions, well, actually, this is for a different topic. <laughs> it's, not, it's not part of your oral history, I guess. I, I was about to ask about, um, you know, what you're going to be doing with the new subdivisions, but that's not part of your story, I don't think so. Well, it's not I only know. that. It's, uh, I don't uh -huh. think they're doing anything with them. They just live here. Oh. Oh, they don't okay. participate so much. Uh -huh. or, do, or are they starting to? Well, there's really, you've got to have a, it's got to start, centrally and work its way out. I don't mm -hmm. think it... Plus, I don't think you have the church culture now that you had back then. The right. church no, formed so a either. huge community, whether it was St. Boniface or St. Paul's, there was that church community mm -hmm. um, where everyone knew each other. You weren't traveling to another town to go to church necessarily. You were going to church in your own town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting. And, and again, si society as a whole has, yeah, it's changed. changed, right? It's changed. Yeah. You know, you don't go to church. You are you, even in school. I forget where I was reading. In there, like, my kid never cracked a book in the. He was on his tablet for the mm -hmm. last oh. full two years of high school. I mean, there's so that's a that's more of an insular, solitary pursuit, as opposed to, you know, classroom and community and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, 
That's very interesting. Well, um, now I really am out of things to ask. <laughs> so, uh, anything else you'd like to say? Not that I can think Not of right at now? the moment. Okay, in that case, I'll go ahead and turn this off. Thank you very much. Thank you.